Thank you. And uh, given that it's a Friday afternoon, I'm actually surprised that we have this many people um, in the presentation. To give you a little bit of background of where I'm from and where I come from, uh, as an undergraduate student, I was an athlete. And I was not genetically gifted, so I looked for anything I could to give me better training, better nutritional support, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, when I realized my dream of playing professional sports was not going to happen, I had to get another career. Um, I decided I wanted to study ways to improve nutrition uh, for athletic performance, improve uh, training mechanisms for athletic performance, and that's sort of what I've set off in my career. Um, I am a professor at the College of Charleston, and I teach in our department and work mainly with exercise science students. Uh, however, most of my research is geared towards supporting athletic performance. So for this particular study, we looked at a product called Hyperimmune Egg. And what Hyperimmune Egg is, it is actually a pure egg product. It comes in a powdered form. In this case, it was chocolate. And it mixes up just like a protein shake. It is basically an egg-based protein shake. And if you understand egg-based protein, it's mainly albumin protein, which is one of the first protein supplements used in sport nutrition. So it's something that's been around for years and years and years. However, Hyperimmune Egg has sort of taken a little sidestep and created a really interesting uh, ingredient. Oral supplementation with hyperimmune egg uh, provides you numerous immunomodulatory factors that are going to stimulate both pro and anti-inflammatory properties in the body. The theory that we based on was that we know if we can stimulate the immune system, there's interactions with the endocrine system, and the endocrine system is going to support muscle repair and growth following exercise. So the idea was can we modulate growth and exercise through activating the immune system. How can we measure this? What we can do is we can do different exercise performance tests. We can actually suppress the body's responses, look at growth and recovery, and then the second time we do the tests, if we're seeing an increase in growth and recovery, we'll see either an equal response or less of a subdued response. So one of the specific aims that we had for this project was to look to see if supplementation for simply for 10 days had any kind of an effect on performance measures, including aerobic fitness, anaerobic power, muscular strength, or muscular endurance. Our second aim was to see if that we could actually alter recovery from prior exercise. And if you talk about athletes, this is what they do in practice every day. They practice Monday, they have to recover for Tuesday. They have to recover for Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, they play in college on Saturday, might get Sunday off, and they're back on Monday going through another series of a week. So it's all about recovery now, and that's where the most of our training response to research is going, is into recovery from exercise to support the next day. Our last aim that we really wanted to get at was what's the mechanism? If we see a result, what's going to explain these results? So what we did for this particular study is we enrolled 24 college males, we, random, or we matched them and randomly assigned them to either a treatment group or to the placebo group. And then we supplemented each group with identical looking and appearing uh, egg-based protein shakes. We titrated these uh, shakes for them. So we gave them four and a half grams per day for two days, nine grams for two days, and then 13 and a half grams for the remaining six days of the study. Uh, the hyperimmune egg and the placebo supplements uh, came from the uh, supplier. They were identical in appearance, identical in tasting, and we mixed them with 237 milliliters of a low carbohydrate milk, which is basically eight ounces. Uh, the subjects actually had to come to the laboratory on all 10 consecutive days to receive their shakes, and we had to have them ingest the shakes in our presence. Uh, I did this as a reason that with college students, we don't trust them to do everything that we say they should be doing. So in order to know that they were getting the product in the time of the day that we wanted it, they just had to come to the lab to do this. It was something we set up very easily in the lab. We used uh, plastic cups, and I actually like using an immersion blender better than trying to shake uh, when you're trying to do a protein powder. And with the immersion blender, we could mix it right in their own cup, hand it to them, and it turned out a really good um, tasting product. And the subjects actually really liked it, and they actually talked about how thick and creamy it was. And I think that was actually a little effect of the immersion blender. Uh, we actually asked the subjects to re, uh, abstain from their regular exercise 
uh, routines for the duration of the study. Reason being is that we were going to have them go through three different iterations of exercise. And I guarantee them after they did the first bout, they were not going to want to exercise on the second day because we were going to beat them up pretty good. The third day, fourth day, they might feel like exercising, but because we're going to test them again, I asked them to abstain for at least those three to four days. And as soon as they did the first trial, nobody questioned us asking, asking us to abstain for the rest of the study. When we look at their pre-data, uh, we grouped everything, checked the data with statistics, and our groups were identical statistically before we started. Here's the experimental methods. Uh, if we look at the experimental method uh, design here, what you're looking at on day one, day eight, and day ten, those are the days that we actually brought the subjects into the lab and had them go through our exercise bout. The days 9 and 11 were the days they came back to the lab, and then we did recovery measures that I'll show you. And then with the blue lines, those are the days they came into the lab, and they actually got their shapes. So we saw these guys, like I said, 10, technically 11 consecutive days, and then they were completed with the study. So the things that we used to measure performance. Since we wanted to sort of get an overall battery, sort of a look at this, we decided to put this together in a comprehensive battery that took three hours to complete for one subject. And they're not three hours of continuous exercise, but they do one test, rest, recover, do the second test, rest, recover, and then continue. The first test we had them do was basically what we call a running economy test. We had them run on the treadmill for five minutes at six miles an hour, zero percent incline. And we're looking at oxygen consumption, and we're looking at heart rate responses. After that five-minute bout, we upped it to a 3% grade, so a moderate intensity exercise, followed by a, si a third bout at 6% grade for a high-intensity exercise. Again, looking at heart rate and oxygen consumption. When they completed this test, we gave them a 15 to 20-minute rest, and then they completed what's called a Wingate test, which is a 30-second maximal sprint on a bike using 7.5% of their own body mass. It is an all-out maximal intensity test to stress their anaerobic system, and we expect them to fail by the end of the test. 